For many decades, there were many debates on whether climate change was real or whether it was just something that naturally happens on Earth. This was due to the fact that there were so many opinions and interpretations on the issue, despite that there had been scientific evidence for a long time. Within the past few decades, climate change has been considered a phenomenon. There is no more debate, and that climate change is here and it is affecting us all in so many ways. There had always been scientific evidence which showed fluctuations in global temperature and climate for a long time, and for a long time, a lot of people just thought they were natural fluctuations. In a sense, they were natural. But in recent decades, it has been suggested that some of the extreme fluctuations were man-made. We are all aware of the greenhouse effect, and we know that there is a natural greenhouse effect to constantly regulate the Earth's atmospheric pressures and the temperatures essential for life. The main greenhouse gases are water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide. Halocarbons and the tropospheric ozone, but the increase in greenhouse gases is what is contributing to the global warming and the extreme climate change. It is observed that the carbon dioxide emissions have been increasing on a global scale, as well as temperature and sea levels. But why is this happening? Well, carbon dioxide comes greatly from the use. Or burning of fossil fuels to generate the world's electricity or energy, it is also naturally a part of the carbon cycle through animal and plant respiration, volcanic eruptions, and the ocean atmospheric exchange. When this excess carbon dioxide is emitted into the atmosphere, it creates a thicker layer of greenhouse gases, which contributes to the insulation of the heat that is sent to us from the sun. Since the 1950s, a lot of people only believed in local gas emissions, but they never thought it could affect the whole world on a global scale. It didn't seem to be such an issue then, and people wondered why they should spend time, effort, and money addressing the issue when it wasn't going to affect them for years or even decades to come. But scientists, a long time ago, Already predicted that increasing greenhouse gas emissions could change the climate. As numerous graphs from research showed major fluctuations in temperature, extreme weather conditions, rising sea levels, and even strange animal activity such as abnormal mating times, global warming and climate change was affecting us a lot faster than predicted. So why are these problems such a big deal? Well, climate change could be the potential death of us all. It is predicted that more than a hundred million people will die by 2030, as it is currently calculated that five million deaths occur each year from air pollution, hunger, and disease as a result of climate change and carbon-intensive economies. Climate change is affecting everyone. It has a major impact on ecosystems and our food supply and agriculture. With climate change, people, and especially farmers, can expect to see extreme heat, extreme cold, increase in bushfires, increase in floods, increase in drought, and increase in severe storms. These extreme weather conditions can greatly affect crops and the efficient production, which means less food is being produced and food prices generally increase. And as a result, the effects of climate change has a huge impact on the economy. Another industry that has been affected with climate change conditions is the wine industry. A lot of the olden day or traditional wine making techniques are dying because of the extreme weather conditions. Grape farmers are finding the heat to increase the rate of ripening, which in turn affects harvesting and maturing times. 
It's often stressful for vineyard workers, as some types of grapes mature simultaneously with other types. With the potential global climate change trends occurring alongside natural weather variations, a lot of fruit and vegetables cannot cope with the drastic changes. So some farmers have learnt to adapt to the unpredictable conditions, while others are still trying to find the ideal adaptation. Water temperature rises due to climate change, and this has been known to also affect our food industries. Tasmanian Waters is known to be one of Australia's main seafood providers, and as the water temperature rises, it makes an impact on the abundance, distribution, and appearance of abalone, lobsters, fish, and other sea creatures. With the rising water temperatures. Major polar ice caps and glaciers are melting all around the world, which means sea levels are rising. And as of 1870, water levels have been measured to rise more than 20 centimeters. Another reason as to why this is such a big issue is that when water heats up, like many other forms of matter, it expands in volume. Scientists have Even discovered polar bears that have drowned. The increase in heat in the atmosphere is absorbed by the ocean's ice retreats, making them more brittle, and so it's hard for animals surviving in cold climates to survive, as it is difficult for them to find stable land. Another complex situation scientists believe to be linked to climate change is. Tropical storms. Some scientists even believe that Hurricane Sandy that struck in 2012 is linked to climate change, but due to the complexity of this phenomenon, scientific answers are still quite sketchy. There are many more issues that are linked to climate change that affect the world, and we are all encouraged to act upon it now to save the future generations. It is a global effort to make a change to our current situation. We know that one of the main contributors to climate change is the increase in greenhouse gas emissions, with carbon dioxide as the leading gas. The main idea to try and alleviate the climate change phenomenon is to reduce the amount of greenhouse gas production. There are so many methods that the general public have taken into consideration to help minimize the effects of climate change. Leading politicians and other government officials and organizations alike are also embracing the idea of minimizing climate change. Over the years, many governments have imposed the carbon tax. Which, in hope, decreases the amount of electricity people and major industries use. This is aimed to decrease the amount of carbon dioxide that is emitted into the atmosphere, and hence minimizing the contribution to the greenhouse effect. They have also tried to pay major companies incentives to decrease their carbon footprints. There are plenty of simple methods to reduce your carbon footprint. You can reduce, reuse, and recycle many of your household items, as getting rid of waste can produce more carbon dioxide. Using less heat and air conditioning and changing light bulbs to more energy efficient ones can definitely reduce the amount of carbon dioxide produced. The next time you think about using your car, try to use trains, buses, or even walking instead. This way, you are sharing your transport with other people rather than driving a bunch of carbon dioxide spewing cars. Or, if you're considering on buying a new car, think about the eco-friendly models. When you're not using some of your household appliances that are plugged into an energy source. Don't forget to turn off the switches if you're not using them. This also applies for unused lights in the house. If possible, make more use of the sunlight available during the day to light up a room.
using hot water can also take up quite a bit of energy. So changing your shower heads to low flow types could not only save you heaps of energy, but heaps of water too. Washing your clothes in cold water is also a great idea, and there are a lot of brands manufacturing powders or detergents that work more effectively in cold water. If you're ever shopping for electrical appliances, don't forget to check their star ratings to see if they are energy efficient. Planting more trees could not only be great for the environment by sucking up some carbon dioxide. But it can also be a fun task to do with your family, friends, or community. The best method of them all is spreading the word and encouraging others to do the same and conserve energy usage in order to reduce our global carbon footprint and to minimize the effects of global warming and climate change. These are only some of the few simple actions that people can do to help out. But there is a giant list of things that everyone can do to stop climate change crisis. Climate change is affecting the whole world in more ways than one, and there are so many simple tasks we can take to reverse or simply minimize the damages. Hopefully, in the future, we can create a better and sustainable world for the coming generations and the environment. It should be everyone's concern to take action now, because the climate change phenomenon is real and it is happening right now in front of us. There is no debate.